Hey everyone, this is Daniel Fioco. Uh, got some of you guys have been asking me for a tutorial for a while now, and I decided to do just that. I just recorded a rendering of a character. It is, it's a mushroom guy. It's a very simple character. It's supposedly gonna be easy for beginners to pick up. I'm gonna leave the source file in the description below and make sure to drop your comments if you have any doubts and if you have any suggestions. Okay, have fun! Cheers! So the first thing I do when I create, when I create my illustrations is I uh, start by sketching it on a piece of paper or sometimes on, on an iPad. Or I, I usually use Procreate. Like for instance, this illustration here, I did, I, I did it on Procreate. Uh, it doesn't have to be this detailed because we're just gonna use it as a guide for uh, tracing it over and, and adding the vectors and shading. So uh, we go from this to this, just a traced over image. I use the, I select the base colors, and I do the final rendering, which is the the most time consuming part. This is the same step I took for this illustration as well. So yeah, so what I'm gonna show you guys now here is uh, I'm gonna have a very simple character, so it's easier to understand. But it's it's this, it's gonna follow the same principle, you know. You're gonna follow the same step. So whatever you learn from that, you can carry carry it over to more complex illustrations like this. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new file, and I'm just going to leave it at 1920 by 1080, doesn't really matter right now. So I created a new file, and I'm going to import the sketch into this file here. So I'm going to choose place, so I go file, place, I'm going to look for the image, which in this case here is shroom. I'm gonna place it here. It's a very nice and simple character, just for the sake of this tutorial. And let me save it. Okay. So I have the image here. I sketched it on Procreate. You could uh, just do it on a piece of paper, take a photo and bring it into Affinity Designer, doesn't really matter. I'm going to set its opacity to like 20 or 30 percent. I can do that just by using the numerical pad, like for 20 percent I, I, I just press 2, for 30 I press 3 and so on. So I just set it to 20 percent. I'm going to lock this layer. I use the shortcut, shortcut Control L, so it's locked now. So I can select it. Let me just scale it up a bit more. Yeah, and then I'm gonna lock it. Okay, because so, I don't want to accidentally select it. So what I do now is is very simple. I use the pen tool. This tool here, shortcut P, and I start creating the nodes for the main shapes. So I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna click and drag here so I can control the handle and trace, trace it along the image. There. What I usually do is I fill it up with white. I like to, to have the the color studio floating here. It's easier to reach. It's just a personal preference. So I'm gonna fill it with white and I'm going to move it under the sketch. Just drag it there. So you can still see the sketch and, and keep on tracing the, the illustration, right? You can either drag it on the layers panel 
or you can let me move it back again. Yeah, you can uh, use shortcuts like Control Left Bracket to send it to back. Okay, so I have the top of the mushroom. I'm going to draw the body. I'm gonna close it. It's a bit. It's way off here, but it doesn't matter. I can fix it later. Fill it with white. Send it to back. Send it to back. It's Control Shift Left Bracket. Then I'm going to use. If I want to edit the the shape I have already drawn with the pen tool, I can use the white arrow. This tool here. It's called the Note tool. You can press A for the shortcut. So I'm gonna click on this node here and I'm gonna drag this handle here. This one as well. So it matches the sketch. Alright. Now for the arm, it's the same thing. Now we're gonna do this part of the mushroom. So for this, for this case, I'm going to use a different approach. So I'm just going to draw with a pen tool here. Make it overflow the object, doesn't matter. If it does, okay, I'm going to fill it with white. And now I'm going to paste this recently created object inside this one. So I have it selected. I press Ctrl X. Select this object and press Control Alt V. Okay, so Control X, Control V, it's just gonna cut and paste. But if you cut it and have an object selected and you press Control Alt V, it's gonna paste it inside that object. It's very useful because you don't don't have to meddle with uh, the layers panel because the layer by the end of the illustration the layers the layer span is gonna be so messy you, you don't wanna meddle with it. Trust me. <laughs> it's not worth it. So just paste objects inside them and use uh, use shortcuts for reordering the, the objects. Like so. Yeah so we're done with the first step. What I like to do in order to keep track of my progress, I create artboards for every step. So I'm gonna click this artboard tool, size document, and I'm gonna click insert artboard. There you go. Then I'm gonna resize it to what we need. Seems okay. Now I'm gonna duplicate that artboard. So I'm gonna Control C, Control V. It's gonna be pasted on top of the other one. I'm just gonna drag it here. So for this artboard, it's gonna be the line art. Okay. And this artboard, I'm gonna it to, rename it to uh, Base Colors. the base color artboard we don't need the sketch anymore so I have the base colors artboard here I can open it I have the image with the sketch I'm just gonna delete it I don't need it here anymore now I'm gonna choose the base colors for this little guy here so let's choose its body color I'm just gonna pick any random color here. What I like to do when I, I work with colors, I use this HSL selector here. You can use either use RGB or CMYK. Any will do. It's just personal preference. 
I have better, uh, to me it feels better to have control with the saturation, luminosity and the hue. So what color do we want for this little guy here? Maybe a mushroomy color? <laughs> I don't know. Let's, let's choose a random color here. Something like that, but it's too satur saturated. I want it to be lighter. More like a beige color. fun with it and for this one we're just gonna go with the classic red not that saturated though a bit orangey and I'm gonna change the color for this guy here but since this guy was pasted inside the object you can't select it just by clicking it. You have to double click it. See? The selection goes inside the object. You could, you could as well have uh, another object that was pasted inside this object. Let me put another color here. So in order to select this, this green square here, I would have to double click it once. So I select this object, double click it twice, and I select this one. The more you double click, the further you go deep into the into the nested objects. I'm just gonna delete it. Let's choose a color for this guy. So what I can do here is I have this eyedropper tool. I just click click and drag it so I can choose the color that I want. I can even choose any color that you see on your desktop is this one after it's chosen it's been added here we just click it's gonna apply it to the object I'm gonna turn it turn down the luminosity change its hue a bit that's it now we're gonna go with the with the rendering itself. So I'm gonna duplicate this artboard as well. I'm gonna drag it. Let's change it to render. I'm gonna select the whole illustration. I'm gonna change, go select this the stroke here, and change its opacity to say 20 10 percent. Uh, so I can barely see it. <clears throat> as you can see, it hasn't changed the opacity for the stroke inside this object as well. So we have to select it again. So I double click it. So the reason why I have the stroke opacity toned down like that is so that it doesn't get too distracting. I want to be able to render this little guy here without any concerns of them interfering with the design. For instance, uh, I want to make sure that the shadows that I apply to this character tell me the volume without giving, without having the strokes giving that illusion, you know? We don't want to be dependent on strokes. So that's why by the end of the illustration, some of them might even disappear. After I'm done rendering this guy here, I'm gonna just go and remove the stroke here, for instance. So what I like to do here is I choose the, the artboard and I can change the color of the artboard as well. So I can choose a neutral color. I'll just try to use a neutral color in the background so it doesn't interfere with the luminosity when you're rendering. Because if you have a white background, by the end you're gonna have everything too dark and vice versa, if you have it a black, as a black background, for instance. So I just 
of it somewhat, like here. Just so it's easy on the ice. So you, you, you gotta have a feeling for the roundedness of this guy. And that's gonna dictate how light interferes with it and where shadows are gonna be cast. Uh, so, in order to start adding the shadows, one thing that uh, I usually did, I don't do that anymore, but if you're a beginner, it's gonna help a lot. We're gonna draw an arrow like a 3D arrow that's gonna represent where the light is coming from, the main light is coming from. So this is where I want the light to come from. If the light's coming from this direction here, where's the shadow gonna be for this guy's head? So we just draw a line. Representing the shadow. If you have uh, experience cell shading illustrations, it's gonna be a piece of cake. So from this line to the left is where it's it's gonna be in the shadow. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna close this shape choose any color just so I can see it. I'm gonna cut it I'm gonna paste it inside this object, Ctrl Alt V, and I'm gonna send it to back, Ctrl Left Bracket, so it sits behind this shape here, because we're only concerned about the red part for now. So with the object selected, I'm gonna remove the stroke. We don't need the stroke anymore. I'm gonna select the fill. I'm gonna go pick this red color here, apply it to the fill, and since it's going to be a shadow, we're gonna, we want to make it a little darker, so we change its luminosity, there, see, something like that, not very much. It's also nice to, to change its hue a bit, because uh, if you only render your illustrations by changing the luminosity only uh, it's gonna be it's gonna look plasticky it's gonna look flat so it's always nice to change the hue as well not only the luminosity so there you go uh, we have this guy selected and if you go to the layers panel you have an FX symbol it's layer effects so you're gonna click on it you're gonna select Gaussian Blur, and you're gonna change its radius, it's going to blur that shape, something like that. You just adjust it to what it feels right. There you go. Since this lower part is gonna follow the same rule of the shadow that we apply to the to the red part. I'm just gonna grab this object, I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna select this one, I'm gonna paste the, the object I just copied inside this guy here, and we're gonna choose another color. Just this color here, change the luminosity. There. I don't need the lines for this object anymore. I'm just going to remove it for this one as well. Now for the body, it's a little bit trickier because it's going to be it's going to have a cast shadow coming from the the hat. 
Where is this shadow gonna be? On the body. It's gonna be somewhat like here. Close the shape. Paste it inside the body. Pick the body color. Change the luminosity. Change a bit of the hue. Add a bit of Gaussian, Gaussian blur to it. And there's also going to be shadow right here. follow along here. There's another nifty start shortcut. It's very useful. So I have this object selected. I'm gonna copy it. Control C. I'm gonna have this one and press Control Shift V. It's gonna paste the attributes from the guy you copied it from to the one you selected here. So that's Control Shift V. Now I'm gonna cut this guy and paste it inside the body with Control Alt V. This shadow should should be softer. So I'm gonna select it and increase the blur. See if you don't have the the legs and arms or arms. You can already tell that there's some volume. Now for the arms. The arms are rounded, like like so, right? They have this curvature. So the, the shadow has to follow that same curvature. So the shadow came right here. Then it's gonna start somewhat somewhere like here. And it's gonna bounce back here. I'm gonna copy the attributes from this guy, paste it through this guy, and paste it inside the arm. To design, I'm gonna use uh, the grading tool, which is this guy here. I'm just gonna click it, click and drag it from the center. It's currently set to linear gradient. I can just change it to radial here or elliptical. I can move these handles. And can I, I can also move them independently if I click this guy here and just unlocked the handles. I'm going to duplicate this shape here, move it behind the eye. I'm going to pick this color. some blur to it because I, I want it to be like a socket you know the green eye has been socketed into the the skin same thing here
So what I did here, I used the transparency to to have this effect. It's a trans it adds a gradient transparency to the object. I'm gonna do the same to this guy here. So first I'm gonna use the node tool to select this node. Then I switch to the pen tool just so I can close that object. Add a few to it. Remove the stroke that we don't need it anymore. Cut, select the body, paste, so it goes right on top of the body and behind the eye. Then I'm gonna use the transparency tool, which is this little glass here. So you have you just press Y and then you click and drag. So we have the volume set here. The next step is we're gonna add occlusion to it. Occlusion is like when a, an object touches another so that there's not much light hitting it. Uh, like for instance, uh, the armpits here, for instance. Or the crotch, if mushrooms have crotches, right? <laughs> so you could add, could add uh, some occlusion here, in here as well. So when you add occlusion, it's supposed to be darker. So it's the same process that we did with the the shadows for the whole the whole character. But it's gonna be more defined and darker. So, what we can do here is, first let me adjust this shadow here, it's not accurate. There. Later on we're gonna fix this guy here. shadow. So we're going to choose the same color as the shadow we have here. We're going to change the luminosity to make it darker. We paste it inside the body. Add some Gaussian blur to it. Just added some transparency with the transparency tool here. So I could blend the arm into the head here. transparency tool for the leg here for it to blend into the body. Let's try adding a fold to this leg here. When drawing the eyes, what I usually do is I I pay attention to where the light is coming from. But instead of the light hitting here, this side, we're gonna go the opposite side because the eye is inset into the character. 
okay so uh the light's gonna be here so what i usually do i i'm just gonna draw a stroke here i'm gonna change go to the strokes panel you can go to view studio stroke if it's not open for you okay so i go to the strokes panel Scale it up. I'm gonna adjust it here. I'm gonna set it to white. Then I'm gonna change the layer mode here, which is set to normal. I'm gonna change it to overlay. I'm gonna add some blur to it. Go to the effects panel. Then I'm going to use the transparency tool so it fades out. There. I could, I could even duplicate it and change the transparency for the duplicated one like so could even add an inner glow to, to the eye I'm going to choose dark green for its color I'm going to click it the blend mode I'm going to choose it to uh, set it to normal I'm going to increase the radius Just the intensity. You just play around with the sliders until it looks okay. Now let's add some shininess to it. I'll draw a white shape here. shape here so I can use a boolean operation to subtract one from the other so I have this both objects selected I'm gonna go up here to the subtract option these, these are the boolean operations so I'm gonna choose subtract there and to make it feel more organic I'm also gonna add some transparency to it there you go. Let me also add something else here. This is going to mimic the horizon line. Set it to white. Transparency tool. And overlay. There you go. also play around with the color of the ice. Could I, I could add some adjustment to them. Let me just group them. Because maybe maybe uh, green eyes there they do not favor this character very much so I'm just gonna group the ice. I have only the eye selected. Then I can go here 
adjustments. And you can choose HSL, which is hue saturation luminosity. Then I can adjust the handle here. color belongs better to the character doesn't stand out very much okay you can already see the the volume of this character right you can see all the roundedness that goes along with it it feels 3d already in short but we can go even further we only worked with shadows here what if we add light to it yeah, so it's gonna pop even more. We're gonna draw where the light is hitting this guy. Somewhere like this. Set it to white. Then I'm gonna change the blending mode to overlay. Add some Gaussian blur to it. And the transparency too. It's going to be far and after. So I just added a gradient to the background here just so we could, could place this little guy into some sort of world. Okay, we worked with the shadows. We added uh, an extra layer of luminosity here, these overlay layers. And now we're gonna take it to the next level by having some bounce light coming from from the ground here because light is coming here and it's gonna bounce back into the character here right so uh, like for this leg for instance the light is gonna hit somewhere around here so I'm just gonna draw a shape of the bounce light here I'm gonna choose a lighter color and blur it there same here for the arm it here, paste the attributes. Now we're gonna use the same procedure that we use for the body, but we're gonna use it for the head.
so we're done rendering this guy let's go a bit further and make it stand out even more let me duplicate this render here call it render 2 I don't know get rid of the arrow you don't need it anymore I'm gonna select the character the whole character except for the shadows yeah upstairs more shadows here okay group it all together I'm gonna duplicate it control C control V yeah we have two now I'm going to right click it and choose rasterize so what it's gonna do is it's gonna turn it into a bitmap image if I zoom in you can actually see the pixels whereas this one it's still vectors I do that just for the sake of performance it's a very simple illustration but for the complex ones if I just keep two copies here and both of them are vectors uh, my PC is gonna blow up so <clears throat> why do I do that so I can change the hue of this guy here something warmer yep and then I'm gonna use the transparency tool to have a color grading effect it's gonna merge this one I just changed the hue to the the one in the back you want since it's a, a bitmap image it doesn't allow me to, to use the transparency tool so a work workaround for that is you group it now you can use the transparency tool by the way grouping it you can do it by pressing ctrl G see you can see now a, a tonal difference from this one to this one it looks more interesting right and there you go we have the final render here so we went from the sketch tracing the sketch to choosing the base colors adding shadows, lights, and uh, tweaking it a bit like we adjusted the, the eye colors because the green ones were standing out too much I changed the, the, the shape of this little thing easier to make it feel more organic then added some color grading to it that's it I hope you enjoyed it and you could learn a little bit from it if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them okay so take care and let's rock <laughs>